Hey guys, thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. This is your host, Thomas Tyree from On The Hot Podcast. Today, I have some bonus content for you guys. The bonus content I will be covering will be in the N in the football world, in the NFL. And in today's bonus content video, I'll be sharing my thoughts on the Baltimore Ravens re-signing Lamar Jackson. So, the news broke yesterday, hours before day one of the NFL draft, that the Baltimore Ravens have re-signed their franchise quarterback, Lamar Jackson, to a new contract extension. The contract that Lamar Jackson is currently on, it's a new five-year extension to stay with the Baltimore Ravens. The contract is worth $260 million. Lamar Jackson gets $185 million guaranteed in this contract. This contract also makes him the highest paid player in NFL history. So uh, just like Jalen Hurts, he just got his contract. Lamar Jackson's contract was just... Five million more than Jalen Hurts contract that puts him over the top of Jalen Hurts being the highest paid player in NFL history. Uh, with that being said, I was wrong about this situation between the Baltimore Ravens and Lamar Jackson. My prediction was that he would be traded come dr by draft night. Instead, he was re-signed to a contract hours before the NFL draft took place. And I thought it was a collision course between the Baltimore Ravens and Lamar Jackson. I thought the divorce was there. I thought they were filing, uh, filing in, turning in their divorce papers when Lamar Jackson actually requested a trade uh, towards the end of the month of March, saying he no longer wanted to be with the Baltimore Ravens and wanted to go in a different direction in his NFL career. Fast forward a month later, he is a happy man and is happy to stay in Baltimore for another five years. Put pen to paper yesterday to make that official. He is staying with the Baltimore Ravens franchise. Uh, I don't think that I, and I'm also wrong, and I'm very surprised that they actually came to the idea of matching Jalen Hurts' contract or even going beyond and giving Lamar Jackson even more money uh, of a contract than what the Eagles just gave Jalen Hurts. Uh, I thought when Jalen Hurts got that contract, I thought it was officially done that uh, Lamar Jackson was going to be playing somewhere else uh, other than the Ravens. But Lamar, the Ravens, Eric DaCosta, gave Lamar Jackson what he wanted, uh, his contract. Uh, the contract was there. He's now the highest paid player in NFL history. So I'm very surprised that Lamar Jackson is staying in Baltimore. But that's a lot of good news for you guys watching and listening that's in the DMV area that are Baltimore Ravens fans. So with that being said, I am happy for Lamar Jackson. Uh, he did deserve a big contract, and it's well-deserved. He is one of the best quarterbacks in the National Football League. Uh, it, but with the big contract like that, being the highest-paid quarterback in the National Football League, highest-paid player in NFL history, with the big contract comes big-time responsibilities. And Lamar Jackson, what he's been lacking over the last few years is staying healthy down the stretch when it matters most. You look back at the end of the 2021 regular season, Lamar Jackson was nowhere to be found when the Baltimore Ravens were 8-3. and three. Currently, the number one would have had the number one seed in the AFC at that particular time if the regular season ended. You fast forward, the Ravens finished the season 8-9 eight, eight after Lamar Jackson went down. You fast forward to the 2022 season, Lamar Jackson gets hurt early December, misses time. They only win one more regular season game, that coming uh, Christmas Eve against the uh, Atlanta Falcons team. And they plummet their chances of hosting a playoff game and winning the AFC North without Lamar Jackson. And they lost in the wild card to Joe Burrow and the Cincinnati Bengals. And have it. If Lamar Jackson played in that game, the way how that game played out that night in Cincinnati, the Baltimore Ravens would have beat Joe Burrow and the Cincinnati Bengals if Lamar Jackson was on the field. So being healthy is going to go a long way in terms of what Lamar Jackson is going to have to prove now being the highest paid quarterback in the NFL. It's time for him to step up the plate even more. He was a unanimous MVP back in 2019. That's great, but he only has one playoff win to show. I am looking for Lamar Jackson to take the next step in Baltimore, and he's got to at least get to AFC Championship game, at least make an appearance to me within the next season or so, or I'm going to have a serious problem with him being provided this huge amount of money. Um, with that being said, I am all in on the Baltimore Ravens heading into next season. Uh, their future is very bright. This, and I'm going to get to that in a few moments, but having this is this is the beginning of a, a fresh start for the Baltimore Ravens. We all thought that Lamar Jackson was going to find a new home. Lamar Jackson has re-signed, and when you have Lamar Jackson, your starting quarterback, you have a great chance 
of winning football games. And it shows why Lamar Jackson as a starting quarterback is 45 and 16, 45 wins, 16 losses, and is uh, starts as a National Football League starter. So that is a huge winning percentage. That means that any time that Lamar Jackson gets on the field, you have a good chance of winning rather, rather than losing ball games. Major, uh, most times, uh, more times than not. So, and I'm, I'm sold on the Baltimore Ravens because offensively, they fixed the offensive holes that was there for this Baltimore Ravens team that was holding them back. Uh, former offensive coordinator Greg Roman is no longer in town. The offense looks fresh and looks to have a clean start, uh, clean slate, clean start heading into next season. The offense is going to be good next year. You're going to have Lamar Jackson at quarterback. You're going to have J.K. Dobbins at the running back position. You're going to have Odell Beckham uh, at the wide receiver position. You're going to have new uh, drafty, uh, new drafted wide receiver who was drafted last night in the first round, uh, 22nd overall in this uh, 2023 NFL draft. Zay Flowers coming from Boston, uh, Boston College. He is a playmaker. He's a guy that you could get his ball, the ball in his hands. He could be a playmaker. He's a shifty guy out there. Can use, uh, can make plays with op uh, in open space whenever possible. So this is a huge addition to the Baltimore Ravens receiving room. Having Zay Flowers in there, you also have Rashad Bateman that's going to be there next year as well. You can have ne uh, Nelson Aguilar that they signed to a one-year deal. He's going to be a cushion. If uh, Bateman, Odell, or Flowers are going to miss some time. So that's a good cushion to have a speeding wide receiver like Nelson Aguilar in your wide receiver room as well. So I like, oh, and I can't forget about the two tight ends that they have Mark Andrews, who is one of the best tight ends in the National Football League, and Isaiah Likely, who they drafted last year from Coastal Carolina. Uh, and with new offensive coordinator Ty um, uh, Munkins coming from Georgia, he's a guy that loves, a, he loves two tight end formation, two tight end set formations. We saw that in his time in Florida, and, I mean, excuse me, in Georgia, and we're going to see that in the National Football League playout for the Baltimore Ravens. I do believe we're going to see a lot of uh, double tight end sets out there with Andrews and Likely on the field this NFL season. So I think the offense is going to look brand new. It's going to have a fresh coat of paint. I'm looking forward to seeing how, uh, how dynamic this Ravens offense can be. And the defense is going to pick up right where they left off last year. The addition of Roquan Smith by the trade deadline, uh, getting him a few weeks before the trade deadline, uh, that was a huge addition for the Baltimore Ravens, getting Roquan Smith, bringing him in there for that defense. That defense is going to pick up right where they left off last year. The defense wasn't the problem for the Ravens down the stretch. It was offensively. And that defense was a top 10 unit uh, when healthy. And I think they're going to pick back up right where they left off uh, well, I should say pick up right where they left off. After, once they got Roquan Smith and down the line, this defense is going to be an effective unit next year. Uh, and they still have time to build this Baltimore Ravens team. Last night was just night one of the NFL draft, just round one. The Ravens still have some selections to pick, uh, to pick some players to plug into their holes that they have in their current roster. So they can continue building in the draft tonight and, to, and tomorrow for the day three selections to help continue to build this Baltimore Ravens franchise. Um, if I was a betting man, if the season were to end, the, if the season were to start tomorrow, I would truly pick the Baltimore Ravens to win the AFC North. I feel like re-signing Lamar Jackson, getting Odell Beckham, drafting Zay Flowers. I feel like that's the they have the they're the favorites right now to win the AFC North compared to the other teams, the Pittsburgh Steelers, the Cleveland Browns, and the Cincinnati Bengals, who have lost a lot of pieces during the NFL offseason. So if I'm a betting man, if the season ended, uh, if the season started tomorrow, the Baltimore Ravens would be my pick to win the AFC North. And that would be huge because they would host a playoff game at M&T Bank Stadium in Baltimore. And that, would, that could automatically give them a playoff win, depending on how the atmosphere is in that game. So, But it's going to be tough to see how... It's going to be interesting to see how the Ravens play out because they're in the AFC, which is, to me is the new varsity of the NFL. You're going to have Lamar Jackson, the Baltimore Ravens, trying to get past Patrick Mahomes. Joe Burrow, Josh Allen, Trevor Lawrence, Justin Herbert, Aaron Rodgers now. They're all these good, good talented quarterbacks are all in the same conference. It's going to be interesting to see how this, uh, how the Baltimore Ravens compete against those elite quarterbacks in, that, in this uh, loaded AFC conference. But I'm very high on the Baltimore Ravens. Congratulations to them re-signing Lamar Jackson. And congratulations to Lamar Jackson coming back to the Baltimore Ravens on a brand new NFL contract. 
But that is all the time I have for you guys today. Thank you guys for watching. Thank you guys for listening. This is your host, Thomas Tyree, signing off. And I'll see you guys on next week's episode.